The American goldfinch is my spark bird or gateway bird. And if you're not familiar with what that means, a gateway bird or spark bird is the bird, the bird that got you to take notice of it and then other birds. It's the one that got you hooked. When I first saw the American goldfinch, I was at my mom's house and she had a finch feeder out and we were sitting on the back porch and I saw that vibrant lemon yellow with the black wings and I couldn't believe that such a striking bird, other than the cardinal, was in North America and it was a North American wild bird. This episode though is all about the American goldfinch and some of the neat facts about them. The American goldfinch's scientific name, which is Spinus tristis, is really interesting because of the tristis part, which means sad or melancholy. Given their vibrant yellow color and their cheerful song, they seem the opposite of a melancholy bird. But it really comes from their sad sounding call. Though their song is really cheerful, their actual call sounds a bit like a cry. Another interesting thing about the goldfinch's Latin name is the first part of its name, or the genus, which sort of describes the category of bird. It's undergone a few changes. Originally, it was listed under Fringilla. Then it was placed under the genus Spinus, which is a genus or category of New World siskins and goldfinches. However, in 1976, Spinus was brought into the genus Carduelles as a subgenus and for a time, scientific papers had them named as Carduelles tristis. Lately, their commonly cited scientific name has reverted back to Spinus tristis. The American goldfinch is usually referred to as the goldfinch for short, but it also has some other names as well, including the Eastern goldfinch and the wild canary. There are three species of goldfinches in North America, the American goldfinch, the lesser goldfinch, and the Lawrence's goldfinch. And we could kind of throw pine siskins into the mix because they're somewhat related. They both belong to the same genus, but they're not all that yellow. <laughs> There's also a goldfinch in Europe, and it was introduced here in New York in 1852. There were other attempts in later years to introduce the European goldfinch to North America. Most were unsuccessful, but there are some isolated populations elsewhere that can still be found. Notably for the Midwest are populations in Northern Illinois and Southern Wisconsin. As of right now, there seems to be little issue with their presence here, especially since they haven't been too widespread. One thing I do wanna point out is just because a bird isn't native to North America doesn't officially make them invasive. An introduced species becomes invasive when it starts to negatively impact the economy and ecology. When it comes to mating, goldfinches are fairly monogamous during the breeding season. However, research has shown that extra pair mating, which means mating events outside of their social bonds, does occur. And while that may seem a little sad for us or a bit like a betrayal, that does contribute to their overall survival and can, can potentially introduce new genes. During the spring and summer months, male goldfinches will be in their full breeding plumage, that bold yellow with a black eye mask and black wings. Females, they're yellow, but they're definitely not as bold as the males, which is pretty typical in the bird world. But what happens is during the late summer, you'll start to see goldfinches get patchy. This is the start of the molt. Once the molt starts to happen, I know that the season is shifting and the bird activity is dying down and winter is coming. By late fall and winter, goldfinches start to blend in with other little brown birds. There's still a yellow tint to it, but overall they're pretty drab and brown. One of the things that can help you distinguish them from house finches and house sparrows, however, is that their wings will still be fairly black. That molt and shift to those drab colors can really disguise them during the winter. And since they blend in with a lot of other birds, it's easy to assume that they've migrated south for that reason. Which brings us to the next fact about goldfinches. Some of the more northern populations of American goldfinches will migrate to southern states and even into Mexico for the winter. However, these migrating populations of goldfinches are considered short distance migrators which is unlike hummingbirds and swallows that can travel more than a thousand miles south. 
What drives those northern populations of goldfinches to travel south is food and resource availability. And with more people feeding birds, especially goldfinches, more northern populations are starting to remain over the winter period. For the goldfinch populations that do migrate, the fall migration usually takes place during the mid-fall, and the return north during the spring usually happens in early spring. A goldfinch's flight pattern is something kind of interesting. They don't quite fly straight across the air. A goldfinch's flight pattern is often compared to a roller coaster because they fly up and down. If you really watch closely, what happens is they fly up and then they seem to free fall and then up and then free fall and over and over again like that. You'll also hear them chatter as they fly and the sound seems to flow in that same up down pattern as their flight. Goldfinches are among birds with a unique feeding skill, which is that they have sometimes been observed hanging upside down on flower heads or tree seeds in order to maneuver and get food. This interesting attribute has inspired some bird feeding manufacturers to create upside down finch feeders where the perch is above the feeding port in a tube style finch feeder. One of the purposes of this is to deter house sparrows from hoarding all the food and spreading diseases. However, researchers have done some field testing on different style finch feeders, including upside down feeders, to determine preference. And while they can eat upside down, they seem to prefer staying right side up. A caveat to this is that field studies can often vary when it comes to the behavior of one population to another within the same species. So if you're feeding goldfinches with an upside down feeder, you might have some luck and they may really like it. Another unique fact when it comes to goldfinch feeding behavior is that there have been several observations of goldfinches and even some housefinches and cardinals perching on hummingbird nectar feeders and trying to get nectar or water from it. I've observed this myself a few times. It's not very common, but it is a pleasant surprise. A caution about this fact, though, is not to let this inspire you to ever put out open cups of sugar water or sugar water in a bird bath or anything like that where birds could drink openly from it. While different birds are attracted to sugar water, it's very dangerous for their feathers. Only use proper nectar feeders when providing sugar water mixes for any bird and be sure to change out your sugar water regularly so bacteria and fungi don't overgrow and lead to sickness. House finches are a bird commonly known for getting conjunctivitis caused by a mycoplasma bacterium infection. However, goldfinches are also susceptible, and bird feeders are a common place for this bacterium to spread from one bird to another. If you ever observe a sick goldfinch or housefinch or any other bird with an eye infection, take down your feeders immediately and leave them down for seven to 10 days. I have a video with a lot of information about what causes this infection, if birds survive, what to do, and if there's a way to mend a sick bird. The conservation status of the goldfinch is least concern, which means that this species is pretty abundant and there's no immediate concern for extinction. However, from 1966 to 2019, there has been a decline in the species of 27%. One way for us to help out is not just by feeding them, but planting plants that encourage them and provide nesting sites and keeping fresh, clean water available. These social birds usually frequent open areas and residential areas. Interestingly, they've been observed in cities and urban areas as well, but given how small they are, they're very easy to overlook unless you hear them singing. One of the best places to find them is areas with a lot of composite type flowers, such as sunflowers, thistles, coneflowers, and rosin weed, to name a very small few. For any of you who have been watching goldfinches or you've just become introduced to these adorable social birds, now you know quite a bit more more about them. And maybe as you watch them more, you'll start to discover other new interesting facts through your own observations.